Hey, Alameda, it's Zach. It's the TikTok guy. It's the peeps guy. It's the guy that's always commenting at city council. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to make a quick video. So everyone probably got this, the Alameda Sun. It usually doesn't come in the mail, but it came this time because it's election season. Um, I was going to ignore something that's happening in Alameda because it's just a group of people that are grumpy about housing and I'm a big housing advocate, but I didn't think anything of what they're doing is going to actually have a big impact. They, um, had paid for a full page ad in the paper here, which is just wild to me. Um, it's full of misinformation, uh, but it's kind of funny. So I wanted to talk about it a little bit because not because I think this petition is going to go anywhere. It's asking for the city to do something that would put the city in a very terrible position. It's kind of would be incredibly reckless to do anything that's in this uh, for a lot of reasons. It's that this same group of people is pushing this nonsense, not because they actually want this to get done. I don't think they think this is actually going to happen. Uh, there's been rumors that they might start a lawsuit whatever. <laughs> the big thing is that they're pushing candidates that are pushing the same idea. And that's the problem that I have because what they're asking for is completely asinine and bad, uh, <laughs> bad in the way that it could get the city of Alameda into legal trouble, but also could do the direct opposite thing that they're advocating that they want. And let me explain. So the city of Alameda has to put together a housing element. You might have heard about it. It's been this thing that's been going on for the last year. If you're following the papers, listening to any blogs, everyone's been talking about the housing element. It's been happening across the state because the whole state has to do this process every eight years. So the city of Alameda has put together a new housing element. Given an allocation from the state of new housing that we have to plan for, it's called ARENA, um, we have to plan for where we're going to put housing within the city. And there is a metric ton of laws that are involved with how you do that. The whole process for putting the housing element together is like this prescribed process from the state where the state gets its arena and then they have to like do an analysis of all the sites within the city and figure out viability and then look up a bunch of other laws and then take public input, hold a bunch of workshops. It's like a whole big thing. And the city has done that and they put together an amazing document. And we know it's amazing because out of all the Northern California cities that have submitted so far, I think there's been 16 so far, um, Alameda is the only city that has filed their housing element with the state to get it reviewed to see if it meets state law. Um, they're the only ones that have received a certification that their housing element is complete. The other cities that did submit the 16 so far um, have to do multiple rounds with the state to fix issues that the state found. So we're in a good place. The city was smart because we started a year ago. We didn't dilly-dally. We didn't drag our feet. A lot of cities are dragging their feet because they are not treating this with the respect that it requires because of the issues that can come up with the consequences of not having a valid housing element. And I wanted to talk about one of those consequences because we're seeing it right now in Southern California. So you need to put together a housing element and get it certified by the state, or you file or fall into a period of non-compliance. And in that period of non-compliance, initially, like the state's not really going to come after you for a minute, but developers can. <laughs> so if you're in a period where you don't have a valid housing element, uh, a developer can come to your city and if they own a piece of land and they're willing to put 20% affordable housing on it and you don't have a certified housing element, it means that developer can do whatever they want because all of your local zoning and building rules and land use decisions are moot. That developer can build whatever they want as long as they include 20% affordable housing. It doesn't matter if it's like in a commercially zoned area if they want to build a 15 story tower in the middle of your residential area it doesn't matter they can go to a judge and that judge can order the city to just give them their building permits and those what's wild is those rights actually vest so if the city is dragging their feet and certifies after the deadline then that developer that got in that window can continue to have 
whatever permits they had during that period. Think Harbor Bay Club. <laughs> if we didn't certify our housing element, the Harbor Bay developer or Harbor Bay Club developers could just swoop in in that window and build a 15 story tower and no one could say anything about it. And this is actually happening right now in cities like Redondo Beach, Del Mar, and Santa Monica. Santa Monica got hit hard. They got 16 different builder's remedy projects, over 5,000 units of housing. And that's not even as part of the housing element. They had an 8,000 unit arena within Santa Monica and they still have to plan for those 8,000 plus the 5,000 that slipped into the builder's remedy because Santa Monica wanted to fuck around and find out and drag their feet and like neg the state that they weren't going to follow state law. And now they're learning. Yeah, it's a big deal that they didn't do what they were supposed to. We could be in that situation in Alameda if we didn't certify our housing limit. We should be thanking our majority on city council that that didn't happen. But we have a group of, I'm going to just call them NIMBYs. <laughs> Alameda Citizen Task Force and Alameda um, Preservation Society that are pushing that our housing element does too much. And I want to tell you, so I am a housing advocate. I'm in a bunch of different housing groups. One of the housing groups I'm part of is the Campaign for Fair Housing Elements. We're kind of watchdogs. And so we go to different cities that are in their process for housing elements to review them, to file comments with the city and to the state, to tell the state that there's deficiencies in different housing elements. And then we watch the cities file their housing elements and then get their letters, why they're insufficient, come back. So we've become sort of experts on what is a viable housing element. And what's great is me as an Alamedan <laughs> have taken that knowledge and during our housing element process, let the city know we need to have programs that cover this because the state's not going to accept it. We were lucky because our housing element, while it got passed as a draft form directly without having to go multiple rounds with the state, is the bare minimum of what's required by the state. But this group is like, we're doing too much. We've overzoned. We're doing too much. It's fucking hilarious. Um, they want us to do less, which would effectively mean that our housing element wouldn't meet the requirements under state law, which would mean the state would decertify our housing element. And then we go into that builder's remedy situation and immediately we're in trouble. <laughs> so no, <laughs> I wanted to call out how silly this is. But at the same time they're doing this, they're also pushing three candidates that have made their mission statements, specifically um, Trish Herrera Spencer, Tony Desog, and uh, Paul Bernstein. Um, they're all pushing that we are zoning too much, <laughs> that we need to cut back or put it all at Alameda Point, which also would violate state housing law under AFFH. We did the programs within the housing element because they were the ones that were required to get the housing element passed in the first place. So if we get these three people elected um, and they have a majority on council, I mean, there's certain laws where we can't undo the zoning that's going to occur. SB 330, the Housing Accountability Act, but they could still deny projects and put us in a situation where our housing element at a future point could be decertified. And there is a part of me, and not the Alamedan part of me, because I wouldn't want this because it would cost the city a bunch of money, but the housing advocate side of me that almost sort of wants the NIMBYs, these people to win to get us into a position where we don't have a viable housing element. Because in this situation where they get what they want, a lot more housing actually gets built. A lot more housing gets built. So what they're asking for ends up causing the exact opposite of what they want. <laughs> it's reckless. It's wild. Um, and so I just, I wanted to point all of this out because I just was going to ignore it. <laughs> the same group of people is also like asking for money to maybe do a lawsuit to sue the city because they're not lowering and we could do less. Like, okay, that's going to go nowhere. It's just going to cause the city to lose money in litigation. That's going to go nowhere, literally. And <laughs> it could even end up where a judge just decides, okay, the thing that they're arguing about is probably measure a, well, we got a letter from the state that told us that measure a, that thing that we try to get rid of with Measure Z that we lost, 
that the state told us that Measure A itself violates state housing law. It's moot. You can't enforce it because if you tried to in any form, you violate state law. These people <laughs> are like, it's, it's not verbatim. We should interpret it, but interpret the way that we think it should be interpreted and do what we want based on our interpretation. That's not the way law works. Um, so, no. There is no way you could interpret it anyways and still have a viable housing element. Um, I just wanted to point all of this out because, not because they're going to get anywhere with this stupid petition, but because of the message that they're trying to send, that this is plausible, and that there's candidates that will make it happen, because they can't. And if they're elected and they try then actually more housing is going to be built. It's going to be like Santa Monica in Alameda. It's going to be like Redondo Beach in Alameda, where we're going to have thousands of additional units built into Alameda because we don't have a certified housing element. You fuck around with state law and you'll find out.